Okay, so for um, today's video, we are going to learn how to use the standard normal table in the reverse way. Right, reverse way means that in the opposite sequence, lah, okay, compared to what we learned before in the previous example. Alright, so we call it as working backwards or finding the value or using the table in reverse way. Okay, alright, so usually I will tell students for this part, lah, um, before you start, all the detail for this part, what you need to do is like you need to understand the graph or maybe the formula very well okay, for all the normal distribution. Okay, so maybe I will just guide you about the graph. Okay, because for me, when teaching this part, mainly I'm using graph method to solve it. Alright, so some other lecturers may have some other methods, but like some, some lecturers will teach you use the formula okay, to find out the answer. Right, they are having their own own style or maybe own method. Okay, so for me, I'm using mainly using graph. Therefore, you need to understand the graph very well. Right, so I take one example. If let's say I'm having x smaller than 1.5 equals to uh, 0 0.9332. Let's say I already find out the answer, 9332. Okay, so for all the previous example, they actually give you this one. Okay, I want to find out the probability z smaller than 1.5. Then you take the table and find out the value, right? So you should get 0 0.9332. Okay, but now it's the other way around. That means oh, maybe they give you z smaller than 8 equals to 0 0.9332 and they want you to find the 8. So this is the meaning of working backwards ah, or in the reverse way when you use the table. Okay. But no matter how, before I show you the detail to solve the question, okay, I will want you to have a look for this equation first. Okay. And now, when we are talking about this equation, you need to have a graph in your mind. How will it look like? Okay, so that's why I told you, the mean of z is always zero, so center is always the zero. Okay, so first of all, you need to know what does this value mean. So this value actually tells you that where is your line? Is it on negative part, which is before the zero, on the left-hand side of zero, or positive value, which means on the right-hand side of zero? Okay, so this value itself tells you the value, whether is it before zero or after zero. Okay, so 1.5 is positive, therefore it is on the right-hand side of zero. So bottom part here, generally the x-axis, huh, we are talking about the value of z. Okay, all right, then now we talk about this one. So the sign here tells you that the area that we want to find is smaller than before 1.5, which means the area that they want you to find is actually this one. Smaller means this on the left-hand side of 1.5. So they actually want you to find out area on the left hand side for 1.5 if let's say z is smaller than 1.5 okay all right and after that if let's say they are having greater then that means on the right lah. they want the area on the right of 1.5 so greater and smaller tells you where should you shape the area correctly left hand smaller means left hand side of that particular value greater means right hand side of that particular value Okay, so all these symbols and values here have their meaning. Okay, then now we continue to the answer. So our answer is 0 0.9332. So this 9332 actually tells you that this is the value for the highlighted area. So they talk about the area value. Okay, so this whole thing is 0 0.9332. Okay, huh? Right, so you have to make sure that you understand all the symbol and value here very clearly and you should know how to draw the graph correctly. Okay, all right, because I'm using the graph later mainly to solve all this kind of question. Okay, yeah? all right, then now. So before I start, there are a few things that you need to know also about the graph. Right, so one common sense. Okay, so one common sense is you should know the area 
Okay, so the area for right hand side of zero, you should know that it is 0 0.5, half of the graph, the area here. Okay, so if let's say you are having the area on the left hand side, it is also 0 0.5, but half of the graph. Therefore, 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 should be equal to 1. That means the total probability or total area under the graph should be 1. Okay, so one common sense also. If, let's say, I'm having a value here, and then you should automatically know that this area should be less than 0 0.5, less than half, right? So less than 0 0.5. So all these are common sense. So that means if let's say I'm looking for this area, this whole area should be more than 0 0.5. A small common sense that you should know about the graph. Okay, all right. So if let's say you roughly know how to look at the area and how to look at the value by using graph, then we are going to discuss further, okay, all the possible questions that might come out in this part. Okay, so I attach a simple table here. And I think I will discuss a few examples with you. Okay, so now, um, what I want, I, I will skip example 7 in our notes. Because to me, I think this example is not useful at all. Alright, I will discuss four examples here with you that covers all the, mostly the possible cases like that we'll ask in the exam. Okay, there are four cases. All right, so before we start, I just want to know that, want you to know that generally, we are having four types of graph. So the first one is this. This is the first type of graph. Okay, then the second type of graph is This one, second type, third one. Okay, so the third type of graph is this one. Okay, and fourth type of graph will be something like this. Okay, so mainly in, in the question now, when they ask you the question, mainly they consist of four different types of formula. Okay, again, I don't uh, expect you to memorize all this, but this is actually a very common, common knowledge that you should know. Okay, so there are four types of graph here. Okay, so if let's say this is value A, this is value A, this is value A and A. I, I don't bother, like, although it is a negative value, but I just write as an A. Lo. So A is negative here. Okay, so the method that I'm using is you must always draw the graph, okay? And after that, for the first type of graph, the general equation will look like Z smaller than A equals to a number. So the number here, because number outside, the probability outside means that it is the area here, right? So generally, this value given should be a large value more than 0 0.51. So let's say 8. Eight, eight, eight. So the, the style of the question of this graph will look something like this. So if let's say in your question you look, you get this kind of equation, then that means in your mind you should come up with this graph. Okay? And then for the second one, maybe you can try to write out what will be the equation looks like. So if let's say z greater than a, how I know it's greater because the area is on the right hand side of a, so greater than a. It is equals to, and because this area is small, therefore in the question, the area given should be less than 0 0.5. So maybe I, have, I can write 0 0.2. So this is the second case. So all the 0 0.8, 0 0.2 are just an example for you, all right? So 8 means that it should more than 0 0.5. 0 0.2 means that the area should be less than 0 0.5. How about the third one? So the third one is z smaller than a. That's why I told you I don't bother whether it is positive or negative. I will just denote it as a only. Right? So z smaller than a, smaller because of it is on the left side of the a. Okay, equals to 
then this area is small, therefore it equals to 0 0.2. And the last one, when you write out, it should be z greater than a equals to 0 0.8. Because greater than means that on the right hand side of a, they highlight. And then 0 0.8 is because of this area is more than half of the graph, which is more than 0 0.5. Okay, so in general, we are having these four examples. Okay, and these four cases uh, for uh, working back for the normal graph. All right, okay, so please remember this four kind of graph. So when they ask you to do the reverse backward question, uh, your mind should have, always have the graph with you. Is it type 1, type 2, type 3, or type 4? Okay. All right. So now I'm going to start with the discussion. How are we going to solve all the questions okay, for these four types? Okay. So first of all, let's say in the question, they tell you, okay, Z smaller than A is equal to 0. 8477. Let's say okay, 8477. All right. So when you want to get the value of a, okay. So before this is a question. Uh, so usually before to, you solve the question, right? I will ask the student, can you try to draw a simple graph on this equation? So this is the first case that we mentioned just now. The a will be here. Because the area is large, right? So the A should be here. And then the area denote by the question is this one. Okay, so you just need to draw a graph to stand by only, right? Okay, so secondly, for the A, the next step is you write A equals to, okay, now you want to get the value of A from the table. So, this is the area, right? 0 0.8477. Therefore, you should look for the 0 0.8477 from this part. Now. Okay, I think previously I told you, right? The value of A denotes, from, denotes all the value here. Okay, so after you get find out the value from here, then you get the area. So now you are doing it the other way around. So that means you need to find out the area from inside the graph, finding out. Okay? All right. So how can you find it out? So the technique is like that. This area, more than 0 0.5. Okay, so if more than 0 0.5, you can straight away look for the value. Where is 0 0.8477? Okay, so please look for the value, which is closest to the 8477 but smaller than it one. Okay, so you, we are looking for 0 0.8461 because if I look for the next value, 8485 is already more than 8477. Okay, so again, it is a bit different from what you learned from SPM before because in SPM before, you are looking for the value larger. Then you minus, but don't forget because we are having the add value, Okay, adding value, therefore you should look for the value smaller. Okay, all right, so now let's continue. This is the value closest to the 8477. And then now you need to think about what value you need to add on so that you can get 8477 from 8461. So you need plus 16. Okay, so look at the back. So plus 16 is this one. You get a 7, right? So, okay, if you look back, what is the value? 1.027. Okay, so that means the A value you'll get is 1.027. Okay, so after you decide the value already, then now you need to decide whether is it positive or negative. Because the graph, they won't tell us negative value. Therefore, I need to check the positive or negative or decide the positive or negative myself. Okay, so 1.027, you look at the graph. The graph that you draw, A is at positive side or negative side, positive. Therefore, this value should be a positive value. Okay, 
Okay, so your A is 1.027 positive. Okay, so that's why uh, I told you for the method that I'm using here, it's quite simple because you just need to draw a graph and then plot the value from the table. Okay, and then uh, instead of you are using changing all the formula, lah, so it depends. If let's say you still remember all the method using formula before, you can still use it. It is okay, one. Right, but for my one, I'm using graph mainly on graph. Therefore, the graph that you draw must be correct. If I say you draw it wrongly, definitely your answer might be wrong. And I say what I say or not. So the graph itself in my method is very important. Yeah, right. So this is the first example that I have. Uh, first case. Okay, so you can see the, the the method is very, very short. Okay, then now we continue to part number two. Okay, second case. Let's say for second case. Okay, uh, so now I try to clear everything. Again. Okay, so for second case, maybe I give you the question like this. Um, let's say probability z more than a equals to maybe uh, what I want to have is okay, let's say I'm having 0 0.2702. Let's say this is the second question. Okay, so z greater than a equals to 0 0.2702. Okay, so first of all, you need to decide what kind of graph is correct or what is your graph. Okay, so this is 0. So which type of graph should I draw for this equation? So greater than a. So that means the area should be on the right hand side of a. La, but I don't know my a is here or my a is here. Okay. Now, because this area is small, less than half, therefore the A should be on the positive side. Okay, and the area that they want us to find out for this one is this part. So that means this value on the area is 0 0.2702. Okay, so my A will be on the positive side. Okay, so make sure you draw this graph correctly. If I say it is wrong, then your answer might be wrong also. Okay, then now I want to find out the value of A already. Okay, to find out the value of A again, I'm looking for 0 0.2702 from this part. Okay, so again, if you go through the whole table, because I just cut out half of it now. So if you go through the whole table, you will see that hey, there's no such value which is 0 0.2702. The smallest value is 0 0.5. Okay, then it becomes larger and larger to the end of the table. So how can I look for this value 0 0.2702? Okay, so for this case, what you need to do is I take 1 minus 0 0.2702 and try to get the value. Okay, so if I take minus, I will get 0 0.7298. So instead of looking for 0 0.2702, you should look for 7298. Okay, so again, I'm looking for 7298, which is the value which is closest to 7298 but smaller than it here. Okay, so value is 0 0.6. One. Okay, so to get 7298, you need to add 7 from here, right? Okay, so you go to the end, see, is there any 7 or not? There, there's a 7 here. So what do you have? Okay, so if you read the value, it will be 0 0.612. So the A will be 0 0.612. Okay, so again, is it positive or negative? value, you look at your own graph, it is a positive value, therefore A is 0 0.612. So this is the second case. Again, to make sure that your answer is correct, you have to make sure your graph is correct. Okay? And if, let's say, your area is more, less than 0 0.5, you're not able to get the value from the table, so you take 1 minus 1. 
always take one minus, find out the value, decide the positive or negative sign by looking on your graph. Okay, so this is what we have for second case. Right, then proceed to the third case. What do we have for the third case here? Okay, so for the third case, we are having, let's say, z greater than a equals to 0 0.7117. Let's say lah. Okay, so how can I get an answer for 711? Okay, so again, first step, draw the graph. Okay, so 0 0.7117, right, the area is large. And they want to have the area on the right-hand side of A, and it is large. That means your A should be here. So that you will have a large area on the right-hand side of A. Okay, all right. So once you are done with the, uh, the graph, then you start to find the value of A. Lah. Again, I'm looking for 0 0.7117. Okay, so maybe you can go through with the graph and see, can you get 7117 or not? It is possible, right? Uh, 7117. Here. 708. Closer to 7117. Okay, because the next one already more than that, more than the value. Right, so again, you are having a value here. Read out the table, it will be 0 0.55. Okay, and then how, what is the value that you need to add on? Okay, from 7088 to get 7117, you need to plus 29. Okay, then you go to the end of the graph. Is there any plus 29 or not? There's no 29 here. The closest is 27 or 31. Okay? Alright, so which one should you choose? Okay, by right, we should choose the number which is closest to the 7088. Oh, sorry, uh, closer to the 29. So 37 and 31 have the same distance. Uh, both are two units away from 29, right? And so what should you choose is, you can choose either 8 or you can choose either 9. Right, so for this one, it can be 0 0.558 or you can choose 0 0.559 or you can choose 0 0.5585. Why put 5585 is because it is between 8 and 9. So you can put it as 5585 if you want. Alright, so in exam, they will assign. Understand? I hope that you understand. Okay, then after that, now I need to decide whether it's a positive value or negative value. Therefore, I look at my graph again. So this is A, and it is before 0. So before 0 means your A should be negative value. And up, it should be negative 0 0.558 or negative 0 0.559 or negative 0 0.5585. Okay, so this is the case that we have. Okay, so again, I hope that you have the idea lah, about this method. Okay, yeah? then the last part. Okay, so for the last part, um, the question will look something like this. Probability z smaller than a equals to... Um, Maybe what I want to have is okay, zero point one seven four three. Let's say okay. So how can I get z smaller than a equals to zero point one seven four three? Again, draw the graph. Zero is here, and then I want to shade the area on the left hand side of A, and the area should be a small area. 
Therefore, all the A should be compared because left hand side of A is this area and this area is small, less than 0 0.5. Okay, so my graph will look something like this. Again, I need to find the value of A. Okay, so before I find out, erase everything again. Okay, so first, if you look at the table, there's no 1743 from the table here. So again, as what I told you just now, what you need to do is like, you take 1 minus 0 0.1743, and what do you get? You'll get 0 0.8257. Okay, so now, please look for 8257 from the table. 8257. So I think this is the closest value. Okay, so if you look at it, it is 0 0.93. So how many units you need to add okay, to become 8257? Okay, so you need to plus 19. Okay, so go to the end of the graph, see is there any 19 or not. So again, there's no 19, but you have 18 and 20. 18 and 20 both are equal distance from 19. So you can choose any one here if you want. Therefore, you should have 0 0.937. Zero point nine three seven or 0 0.938 or you can even put 0 0.9375 if you want. Okay? And then now you decide is it positive or negative. So from the graph, you see it's 8 on the left hand side of 0. Okay? Before the 0, therefore it should be a negative value from the graph. Right, so this is what we have. Right, so we are having four cases now. When we want to find the z, okay, value of z from the table in the reverse way. Right, so this is one of the suggestions of the method that you can use. If you don't like, then you have to memorize all the formula that we learned before. And then, uh, I don't like that method is because I realize that a lot of students they just purely memorize it and they always confuse themselves themselves. Like some students will tell me, oh, I thought that when I change the sign, I need to put negative and so on. They are not clear about the rules. Therefore, they just simply change it. So to me, I think by using graph, if let's say you know how to draw the graph correctly, the method to me is quite simple. Like, if let's say you, you remember these four cases. All right. Okay. And then in the exam, if let's say uh, they ask you this kind of question, right? Okay. But it is not belongs to this four pattern one. No matter how, you just try to rephrase it, become this four pattern that I show you here. Then you can get an answer. Okay? So we might discuss on some application questions later. Right? Okay, so uh, what you need to do now is, so I completed the four cases here. So as what I told you just now, I will skip the seven because I don't think that is useful. That's the first thing. And please highlight this one. If you cannot the value for the probability in the table, choose the value that's closest to the required probability. Okay? So as what I said just now, you can choose any one which is the closest. So you can choose, if I say the distance are the same, then you can choose both, like either one of it. They will accept it. Alright? Okay, so now your homework is, you need to try example 8 for me first. No matter you want to use the method that you learn, or you learn just now or in secondary school, up to you, okay? But just make sure that you, after you apply and try by using the method that I teach you or the method that you learned before, you can get all the answer here. Okay, so these four are also the four patterns that I did just now, four different patterns, okay? So you can try, either you want to apply the method that I teach you just now or you want to recall back the method that you learned in SPM before. Maybe you're using graph, uh, sorry, using formula, right? So still can apply if let's say you still remember it. Okay, so example 8, I will leave it for you to try it. Okay, and after that, same thing happened for example 9. Okay, then for example 9, um, it is something that you should take note of about it. Actually, example 8 and 9 are more or less the same. Just that for example, that is a bit special because you can actually find the critical value table. 
okay, to save time. What does it mean by critical value table? So take, wait me for a while, I need to show you the table. Okay, so maybe I can show you this table whether I'm copying it. Okay, so this table, I take it out from um, the normal table also. It is at the bottom part at the end of the table, normal table that we use in formula booklet. Okay, you just have a look, you will see it is at the bottom part. Okay, so for this part of the table, uh, sometimes it can actually save our some of our time. Okay, when you want to get, get the value for A. Okay, so how can you use it? Very simple also. I know it by using one example. Okay, so again, one, two, three, four. I, I will still leave it for you to try later. I will discuss part five with you because we haven't solved the question with modulus, right? Okay, so maybe you can start with it. They want us to find out the probability for Z, which is smaller than A, is equal to 0 0.9. Okay, so I think I told you before, if you want to expand the modular Z, that means Z is between negative A until A, and the area is 0 0.9. Okay, so after I expand it, right, maybe you'll tell me, ah, this is not be, not belongs to any of the patterns that we learned just now, right? Just now we learned four patterns, huh? but now this is in between one. Okay, no worry. You just try to write out, draw out the graph first. So Z is between negative A until A. That means this is the area that they have. Okay, then now, if you look at this graph, what is the value for this area? So the highlighted area is 0 0.9. This highlighted area is 0 0.9. That means by common sense, what is the value here? And what is the value here? These two values should be the same because for the graph, they are symmetry, right? Negative A and A, they should be symmetry. Therefore, these two areas should be the same also. Just that I didn't draw evenly, okay? It should be the same. Right, so can anyone tell me what is the value here? So this value is 0. Uh, 0. 0.1 divided by 2, which is 0. 0.05. This is also 0. 0.05. How I know it? Because you should know that all the area added up should be equal to 1. Okay, so 0 0.9 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.05, you get a 1. Okay, so to get a 0 0.05 means like 1 minus 0 0.9 divided by 2. So you get 0 0.05 here. So after you look at this graph, if you draw this graph out correctly, there are a few ways that you can write. Okay, so from this graph, what you can do is like, there are a few methods. Huh? First one, you can use this. If you look at this green color area, you can write out the pattern like this. Huh? Z greater than A is equal to 0 0.05. Then this is one of the patterns that we learned just now, right? Out of the four. Therefore, you can continue to find the answer. If you want to write out like this, it is not wrong. Okay? Then another way is from the same table, what can you write out? Okay, so if let's say you are looking for this part. Okay, the whole area before the A, on the left hand side of A. You can also write out like this, Z smaller than A equals to 0 0.95. Because the highlighted area plus the 0 0.05, you get 0 0.95. So this is another pattern that we learned just now out of the four. Okay, then from here continue, you can get an answer. Understand what I said? So you can actually write out one useful equation, one useful pattern from what we learned before. Okay, from this table. All right. Although the original question looks like a bit complicated, like wow, I got negative A and A and so on. No need to do worry about it. After you draw out the graph correctly. You can still use the graph to write out the pattern that we learned just now. Okay? Right. So now, let's talk about this. Okay, we are using this pattern now. Z smaller than A equals to 0 0.95. Okay, so to get the value for A, 
I will look at the value of 0 0.5, right? Okay, so instead of finding out the table that the method that I teach you just now, you can always have a look and see is there any special value here or not. Can you see that the 0 0.95 is here? And what is the value of that? 1.645. So you can take 1.645 straight away. If you want to find the value from top also cannot, but this table sometimes will set, uh, help you to save a bit of time. Okay, All right. So after you get A equals to 1.645, then again on the A, when you look at it, it is on the right of the graph, so it should be a positive value. So A equals to positive 1.645. Okay, so this is one of the examples that involve modulus. Although we didn't learn the pattern of the modulus just now, out of the four cases, but after you draw the graph correctly, you still can write out the equation in one of the four patterns that we learned just now and you follow the steps that we learned just now. Okay, so this is what we have for example 9. With part 1 until 4, go and try out on your own. For these four parts, you can always use this table here, the critical value for normal distribution table. Okay. So if no problem, then if I proceed further, I also want you to have a look for example 10. Okay, so example 10, they tell you that Z is normally distributed. And then they want to find the upper quartile of distribution. Okay, so how can we start here? Right, so to get the upper quartile, you should know that Z smaller than upper quartile is Q3, right? So Q3 is equals to 0 0.75. 75 percent are right, the upper quartile. So from the smallest value until Q3, the probability is 0 0.75, 3 over 4. Okay, so again, if you draw the table out, sorry, you draw the graph out, what do you get? Where is your Q3? So your Q3 should be here. And then the area is large, more than half. So this area is 0 0.75. So if you continue to use the method that I teach you just now, you should be able to get Q3 equals to 0 0.674. Okay, then for part number two, to find the interquartile range. So to find the interquartile range, you need to find out Q1. So again, the same thing. Z smaller than Q1, that means from the minimum value to Q1, what is the area that they cover? 1 over 4, which is 0 0.25. Okay, so you continue to find out the Q1 first. I won't tell the answer, you find out on your own. And then after that, you find out the IQ. So IQ means Q3 minus Q1. So the answer that you get should be 1.348. Alright, so this example 10 also go and try out on your own. Okay, so for all these few examples, right, you have to decide whether you want to use the graph method that I teach you just now or you want to use back the formula method that you learned before. There's nothing correct or wrong. Both are also correct methods, just that it depends on how you understand the, the methods only. All right, then after you fix a method already, then always use that particular method when you are trying the question so that you practice more. Okay, right, so this is what we have for the video today, for this video. And then for the next video, we are going to apply what we have learned here to the application question. Okay, that's all.